in Memphis, Tennessee, got herself into some trouble for limiting students to only two hall passes per month mm. to cover everything from bathroom and water breaks and trips to the school nurse. Yes, apparently it was an attempt to crack down on students who were abusing hall pass privileges, but parents were furious. Like, I would lose my mind. What, what, were all the kids in the, ha in the hallway? Yeah. Like, I'm trying to figure out, like, what would make you go so hardcore? Well, here's my thing. If you don't want to be bothered, don't be a teacher. Oh, okay? hi, look I at just, you. That, that's, I'm sorry, but people have bladders, kids, and especially Especially young women, you can't deny girls to go to the bathroom. That you get, okay, that's your issues. one time you get to go. We have issues and things that come up. Yes. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You know, I think it's, to me, it's, I always, I look at that and I go, if you're having that much trouble disciplining your class, then is that, that may not be the answer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, there may be something else you can do because I know teachers have a really hard job. I know, I Absolutely. know. Absolutely. But she sent home the letter and the letter, she was like, I know it's petty. But this is all you're gonna get. Yeah, that, that the fact that she used the word petty. Yes. It's not so great. What's where you start? Yeah, and also, in recent years, there's been this trend mm -hmm. of lunch shaming children who have unpaid school lunch debt. Yes, yes. There were reports of school workers actually taking food from the students and throwing it in trash cans when they realized the student had unpaid lunch bills. In fact, a Pennsylvania cafeteria worker quit after being forced to take lunch from a child with an unpaid bill. And I salute that worker. Yes, absolutely. Because that, that is not cool. Yeah. And in Alabama, I need lunch money oh. was stamped on a child's arm. That what? is, oh, I, how can you shame a kid for not having money? I just don't know who does that. That is again, one of those things where if somebody came to me at my job and said, okay, write on that kid's arm or stamp on that kid's arm, anything. Yes. Besides, you're fabulous. And even that, why are you stamping kids? Right. You know, but like, you, you have a lunch debt, like you just don't do it. Mm -hmm. It's, 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 awful, right. it's cruel, and then to have the child watch you, it actually illustrates a really important point, I think, about why people, about people who have food scarcity. Right. And people who um, run into, through a variety of reasons, right. every once in a while people run into a scarcity situation. Absolutely. And, and don't have all of the resources they need. We don't know, my issue is this, you don't know what a child is going through at home. This may be their only meal. It in fact often it may is. Be, you know, it may be, you know, that they may be living in a car. Yep. They may not have an opportunity yep. to take food out of somebody's mouth. But to take it and directly throw it, it into the, the trash. That's what, you're, what you're demonstrating quite clearly is that the reason people go hungry on this planet isn't because we don't have enough food. Right. It isn't because we can't get the food to them. It's because we charge for food. That's right. And it's because we charge exorbitant prices for it. Yeah. And the thing is, is food a right? Or yeah. a privilege. Yes. <laughs> you know? And for children, it should be, you, you sh they should have access to food. Absolutely. And when I hear about, you know, your child, you know, your daughter's in a public school yeah. and they have a fundraiser after fundraiser, have a fundraiser for the school lunch program. Thank you. You know, like, let, let's take some money out of the football and put it into the school lunch program. <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I and just, maybe you might get some more football players. That's what I'm saying. And somebody I'm, can eat. I just, I find it absolutely reprehensible and I can't believe that anybody would do that. I know. Well, people do it day in, day out. Out, all it's right? crazy. An elementary school in Queensland, Australia started charging parents for dropping off their kids early. Now, some people said this change was unfair to working parents who occasionally needed to drop off their kids early, mm -hmm. but others were okay with the policy. Now, what would you do if the policy were implemented here? Well, here's the problem. Again, we're going to this question of working parents. Mm -hmm. that, that the system of taking your child to school doesn't fit the system of people having Thank to you. work. And that is a problem because these two things, it's like trying to fit a square peg into a round hole. I don't get it. Doesn't it doesn't fit. And also, you know, I don't have a, a child, but mm -hmm. I, you know, I watch you with your daughter and there are all these like, um, non-holiday days. Yes. Where you're like, oh, Abby's home because of... It's an in-work, school, work, in holiday, day, not work, holiday. teacher, working day. Mm -hmm. with the, I thought the work they were working with it, the students were there. It's like we said, teachers are not paid enough. They don't get enough assistance. They don't yeah. get enough help. But th when you look at people working jobs, mm -hmm. their hours don't line up no. with school time. No. So then you say, well, what happens? But then I will say on the other hand, you don't want kids unattended 
on uh, uh, at some location, well, right? Well, you remember what it was like when we were kids. When I was a kid, your parents went to school, went to work. You walked to school, mm -hmm. right? Well, my experience. Both ways. Uh, right, with in no the snow. shoes. In, in the, the snow. snow. Carrying, carrying a donkey. Yes. <laughs> I don't know why, you just had to carry a donkey. And you played on the playground until school opened, right? Yeah. yeah. That's what, that was my experience. And, uh, anybody else have that experience? You just, you know, you played. And you played on a, like a rusty swing. Oh, and it didn't matter if it was the dead of winter. You know, it didn't. It did not. <laughs> it did not, it did not it really matter. It didn't matter. It didn't matter. And it was unattended. Nobody, nobody came out there. There was no, no, no yard manager. The but the problem is now that then the school becomes responsible for Absolutely. anything that happens on that property. Absolutely. And they can't pay people to be there 24 hours That's a day. That's right. So we can't have it. I was saying in this culture, we can't have it every which way. Either we're going to give schools more money. Yes. Or we're not. Yes. <laughs> so if we're not, then you can't also think that the school will have all of those services. Those services. And that's, but they and that's should the have them. Yeah, because even like, well, there was one day once we were late picking up my daughter from school and uh, we had, we told her, we said, you know, go to the playground at school. Right. And there was a person who had snatched her up and they were like, she cannot be here. Yeah, it's, and I get, I get that. I yeah. get that they have to be in control of that environment. Mm -hmm. But it also comes down to, you know, maybe as a community, all figuring out ways that we can help each other out. I, I know. You know, like, I know. just show up for each other. Other, and we're all in it together. Meet time with Frangela. 